What do you mean by a push pull converter? My name is Rishi Ranju and welcome back to the Backbench Engineering Community where I make engineering easy for you. So, let me ask you guys the obvious question. What do you actually mean by the term push pull converter? Well, let's find out. So, a push pull converter is a kind of DC to DC voltage converter. That is, it is used to convert one form of DC voltage to another form of DC voltage. Here, a push pull converter is basically the same as a forward converter, but some changes are brought forth to its structure. So, what are those changes? Well, for that, let's draw the circuit diagram of a push pull DC to DC voltage converter. So, in a forward converter, we first saw that we had a voltage source Vs, and this voltage source was connected to the primary coil of a particular transformer. This then was connected to a particular switch, and then the circuit was completed like this. So here, where there is a primary winding of a particular transformer, there will be a secondary winding. So here, subsequently, a secondary winding is there, just like a forward converter. But here, the extra thing that comes over here is that another transformer is placed over here like this. That is, the primary winding of another transformer is connected to this particular junction like this. And then this hops over this, there is no connection here, this then comes like this and it is connected to another switch like this and this then is connected over here like this. This is the first change that we bring forth to this particular circuit. And now where there is a primary winding, here also there is a primary winding, so therefore here also there will be a secondary winding which is then connected like this over here. Now this secondary winding will have the same circuit that we saw in the case of a forward converter. That is a diode will be placed here and then a particular inductor would be placed here and then a particular capacitor would be placed here which then completes the circuit like this. And across this capacitor a particular load resistance is placed across which the output voltage V0 is obtained. But now here, there is a secondary winding over here as well. So therefore, this secondary winding is connected to this particular circuit like this. It goes up, it hops over this and it is connected to here like this in between this particular inductor and this particular diode. And right opposite to this diode over here, another diode is placed over here like this. So therefore, there are two diodes over here. This thus is the basic circuit of a push-pull DC to DC voltage converter. So these two are transformers. So these transformer windings have got the same polarity that is they both have the same direction of rotation of this particular coil. So therefore this same polarity is denoted using dot convention like this. They all have the same dots like this. And now let this switch be say S1, let this switch be say S2, let this diode be say D1 and let this diode be say D2, let this inductor be say L, let this capacitor be say C and let this R resistor be say R. So this is the basic diagram of a push-pull DC to DC voltage converter. So now let us see the first case. So here there are two cases. First case is when switch S1 is on and S2 is off. And the second case is when S1 is off and S2 is on. So let us assume the first case in which switch S1 is on and S2 is off. So here S1 is on and S2 is off. So therefore what we observe here is that when switch S1 is on, this particular voltage source Vs will start delivering a current and a current starts flowing through this particular loop like this. That is it will go here, it will go here, it will go here, it will then pass through this inductor and it will go here, it will go here, it will go here, it will go here and it will go here. So a loop like this, through a loop like this current starts flowing and therefore a polarity of plus minus is induced into this particular coil because the winding of this transformer here acts as a inductor. So therefore here plus minus is induced. So because plus minus is induced here, the same plus minus is induced over here and the same plus minus would get induced over here. So here, since plus minus is induced over here, 
current cannot flow through this particular loop because this diode becomes the reverse bias so therefore this diode will not be conducting so therefore what we observe is that the current starts flowing through this particular loop that is it flows here it flows here it flows here it flows through this particular inductor and partial current flows through this particular capacitor and partial current flows through this particular resistor and therefore it completes the circuit and it goes here and therefore it completes a particular loop like this therefore the current keeps on flowing through this particular loop that is no current will flow through this particular diode current will only flow through this particular loop and therefore a particular polarity will be induced onto this particular inductor which is plus minus and here this particular capacitor also starts getting charged a certain amount of charge starts getting built inside this particular capacitor and subsequently the load resistor will also be provided with the particular output voltage v0 so this is the case that happens when switch s1 is on and s2 is off now let us assume that we are turning off s1 and turning on s2 that is switch s1 is off and s2 is on now switch s2 is on and switch s1 is off so when that happens what we observe is that current will not flow through this particular loop because s1 is switched off over here but rather what we observe is that current start flowing like this it flows here it flows here and when it reaches here it cannot flow here because this is open so therefore it will go to this particular loop like this like this like this like this like this and it will jump and it will go like this like this like this like this like this so it will complete the loop like this in the shape of 8 we can say it would keep going on like this through this particular loop so therefore while this happens a polarity of plus minus would get induced over here so therefore the same polarity of plus minus would get induced over here and the same polarity of plus minus would get induced over here as well but here what we observe is that this because of this plus minus the current cannot flow through this particular diode that is this diode becomes reverse bias so therefore current cannot flow through this diode therefore what we observe is that current flows through this particular diode that is first it goes through here then it goes through here it is in the forward bias condition therefore it passes current then it goes through here then it goes through here it goes here it goes here it passes through the particular inductor it goes here partial current goes through the particular capacitor and partial current goes through the particular resistor it goes through here it goes through here it goes through here and again this current goes through here and it keeps on going like this so this is the case that happens when switch s1 is off and s2 is on as simple as that so these thus are the two modes of operation for a push pull dc to dc voltage converter but this is the ideal case practically when we try to implement this while these switches are being turned on and off there will be an intermittent state in which both these switches will be off there will be a state in which both these switches will be in the off condition so let us assume that both these switches s1 and s2 are in the off condition so in such kind of a condition what we observe is that the polarity of this particular inductor would get inverted that is this becomes plus and this becomes minus and what we saw was that this capacitor was initially charged while current used to flow through here so therefore this inductor and this capacitor will provide an output voltage like this and it would pass through a resistor like this but what we observe is that when it reaches here it will become half and half of the current would go through here and the rest half would go through here so therefore half of the current would flow through diode d1 and the rest half would flow through diode d2 and it would then reach back over here and then it would flow here through the inductor again like this so therefore a loop like that happens when both these switches s2 and s1 are off because when both these switches s2 and s1 are off no current flows through here because both these are on the off condition so therefore vs will not provide any current here there is no kind of current flowing through here whatsoever the only kind of current that flows here is because of the discharging effect of the capacitor and the inductor as simple as that so now let us draw the wave forms that are associated with a push pull dc to dc voltage converter let's draw them 
So here, these are the gating pulses that are given to these switches. So this is the case when switch S1 is on. This is the case when switch S2 is on. This one is the case when switch S1 is on. Again, this one is the case when switch S2 is on. Okay. So this small portion over here is the case when both S1 and S2 are turned off. They are both off in this case. First, let us see the output voltage that is associated with the push-pull converter. So here, this is the output voltage. So first, when switch S1 is on, we saw that an output voltage happens over here. So we obtain an output voltage here. And again, when both these switches are off, the capacitor and the inductor starts discharging and provides an output voltage here. So therefore, again, an output voltage is obtained. Again, when I switch S2 is on, we saw that this diode becomes forward biased and therefore current flows like this and therefore an output voltage is obtained. Again, when it is switched off, an output voltage is obtained. Again, when S1 is on, an output voltage is obtained. Therefore, we obtain a clean, straight DC output voltage like this. So this is the waveform of the output voltage that is obtained for a push-pull converter. So here, a correct flat output voltage is obtained in the case of an ideal condition. But here, this is not an ideal condition. So therefore, in order to obtain nearly flat output voltage, we should take a pretty large capacitor because when this is turned off, the output voltage is provided by the discharging effect of the capacitor and the inductor. So therefore, if a very large output voltage has to be provided, then a very large capacitor has to be taken. So for an ideal situation, the capacitor must be very, very large. So therefore, if we take a very large capacitor, we can obtain a nearly flat DC voltage at the output. Next, let us see the value of the diode current for D1. So when switch S1 is on, that is when this switch is on, we saw that this becomes plus minus and therefore current starts flowing through here. And therefore, we see an increase in current from a minimum value to a maximum value like this. Now, when both the switches are turned off, we saw that this capacitor and inductor starts discharging and current flows through this loop. But when it reaches here, it splits into two equal halves and it goes through this path and this path. That is, half of whatever was discharged by this go through diode D1 and D2. So therefore, we see that half of the current starts decreasing. Therefore, ideally, it was supposed to be like this. But half of this flows, that is, what you observe is that the current starts decreasing half like this. So now again, when switch S2 is turned on, that is when this particular switch is turned on, we see that no current passes through D1. So therefore, the value here, it is here. And again, when both the switches are turned off, same half value of current flows. And now again, when switch S1 is turned on, we saw that the current starts flowing from a minimum value to a maximum value like this. Now again, when both the switches are turned off, we see that half of the current starts decreasing like this. And again, when switch to S2 is turned on, no current flows. So therefore, joining all this, we get something like this. So therefore, this thus is the waveform that is associated with D1 diode. Next, let us see the waveform that is associated with D2 diode. Okay, so when switch S1 is turned on, D2 diode becomes reverse biased and therefore no current passes through D2. And now when both the switches are turned off, what we observe is that this particular same half value of current starts flowing like this. Now when switch S2 is turned on, what we observe is that current starts flowing through D2. That is current, there is an increase in current from a minimum value to a maximum value like this. Now again, when both the switches are turned off, half of the current starts flowing like this. Now when switch S1 is turned on, no current passes through it. And again, when both the switches are turned off, half of the value of the current passes through it. And again, when switch S2 is turned on, we see an increase in the current like this. So therefore, this is the waveform. Let me just join this for you. This is the waveform that we obtained for the purpose of D2 diode. And now, plotting the waveform for the inductor current, IL, that is the current passing through this, what you observe is that when switch S1 is turned on, the current starts increasing like this. And now, when both the switches are turned off, it starts discharging and current starts decreasing like this. Again, when switch S2 is turned on, current starts increasing. And again, when both the switches are turned off, current starts decreasing. And again, when switch S1 is turned on, current starts increasing. And again, when both the switches are turned off, current starts decreasing. Again, when switch S2 is turned on, current starts increasing. And again, when it is turned off, current starts decreasing. So this is the waveform associated with the inductor current of a push-pull converter. So guys, this does, is the basic principle behind the working of a push-pull DC to DC voltage converter. As simple as that. 
So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you refer to as a push-pull DC to DC voltage converter. And we'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.